Hi, everyone. Um, that is a part of the Quantum Power Deck subscription. So excited to share with you this month's message. Lots going on, right? So um, in this way, it's funny, I actually already recorded this. Um, today is the 18th. I actually recorded it on the 15th. And um, it was like a almost a 40-minute video. And then I went to um, extract it, and it never saved. And so... Yeah, so there you go. It's interesting because there was a lot of um, there's a lot of intense energies this week for those of you that um, are watching it this week in March. Um, lots of squaring of the planets, which always creates tension um, and kind of conflicting energies. So it can kind of be a little challenging. Um, yeah, so here we are, second attempt, so I already went through everything, but um, hey, it wasn't right, right? So it's just it's kind of moving along and flowing and trusting, so, um, so here we are, doing it again, and honestly, I'm grateful that it waited because in when I was going to sleep, they wanted me to share this other stuff, so I think that was part of it too. Um, not the messages so much, but this month... There was so much um, with the predipus because of the new year, like the um, the new year that begins, you know, with the spring, spring equinox. Um, this is almost the beginning of a new year this month, right? So there's a lot of new energy and not just that. There's, because of the alignments of the planets, there's this um, opening that's happening during this awakening process, it's almost like there's this old world and this new world, and right now we're in between them, so there's this intensity, almost like this chasm um, in between. We're here, in between, almost like a birth canal, I guess you could say, to where um, there's a lot of intense energy. So I actually channeled two other paintings. So this month is actually three paintings. Oh, three. This is what I said. I said three paintings. It must be four. <laughs> Somewhere there's a fourth one. Um, but no, there, I really only have three. Um, so I'm going to share with you all three in the video. Obviously I have the one main one with the fox. If you haven't seen the small little snippet I give the public, um, but you guys are special. So you get this full on, um, energetic, kind of energetic support system. And that's what these videos are meant to do. Kind of help you through this awakening process. It's going to take, you know, the duration of our lives, but, um, kind of assist you in understanding what's going on and just feeling the energy that comes through me as I talk through these videos because I, I do begin to channel um, and they share, they basically take over and I just start saying what it is that they want me to say. Um, so yeah, so let's begin. So this month is a little intense and because this awakening or this chasm is created, um, it's, it's interesting because the fox is about letting go of our brains and um, kind of moving into a suspended state with our brains, right? So here I'm going to show you this painting. And we're going to begin here. Even though this is the last painting I did for the month, um, we're going to begin here. And we begin here because it's so important as we're do going through this awakening process. And we talk a lot about it. And the thing is... <laughs> It's not really a thinking process. And so that's in some ways where all of us that are sitting here on YouTube or sharing or as teachers or whatever, it's like it, we could talk at you all day, but it really is missing the point because it's in the silence. It's in the silence. It's in the experience. It's in with, it's, it's the moments you begin to communicate with divinity within you. You begin to communicate with yourself. And you're no longer looking for it outside of you, even from me or anybody else. And it, it is helpful to get information for sure and to have these energetic supports for sure. I mean, I need them as well. But it don't let it take away from you actually you know, slowing down and checking within every day, right, with yourself. And that's basically what this fox represents. Foxes are, foxes are cunning, you know, they're extremely smart and um, very um, agile with their thinking. They're clever, right, so they can figure their way out of anything. Um, and in this mental kind of genius, um, we're actually being asked to move away from it, Um 
so embracing the fox in a, in a very particular way, um, but then also separating from the brain in other ways. Now, a lot of people, and I use the brain, it's very, very limited, and that's where um, I feel like in this culture and in this society, we really have overvalued the brain, and um, we have misunderstood its power. You know, it's it's like a false sense of security. It's a false sense of control, really. And in this brain space, may, you may be aware of it or not. It you know, this is like the ego. So this is where we can get in trouble. Um, or old school is the devil, right? <laughs> old school wording would be the devil, but um, it's the mind, it's the ego. It's where um, you have to be mindful of your belief systems here in this space because it is in our minds. If it's not checked, if we're, if we're not becoming aware of what we think and what we feel, then the stories that and the filters and our perspectives on what we think then is driven by our subconscious and that's where it gets really tricky so when we allow our subconscious to take control or drive the bus let's say and that's just meaning we're not aware and we're just kind of going through the day and we you know are angry here or we this triggers us or whatever you know usually our subconscious belief systems are going to be based in fear without conscious intervention where we're, we're slowly integrating love into our subconscious and kindness and compassion, right? Um, and if you have those in your subconscious already, I'm so happy for you truly because um, that's, that's a truly, a, it's a blessing. Um, so in this space, you can see the fox here to the right. So we begin with the left, which is a very concrete landmass, right? And and then we have the sun and the moon and breaking away from this landmass is this fox. And it's in that flotation, it's in that um, surrendering and floating is the almost the energy that they want to give us to how we interact with our brains. We have to cultivate, they say, a spiritual practice. And if spiritual practice is too religious for you, um, it's even a mental health practice. It's the same thing, really. It's a mental health practice of just saying, of surrendering to all of your being. So really focusing on um, relaxation, really focusing on um, things that bring you joy, that bring you peace, that bring you balance. And, and this isn't always an easy thing. I mean, putting you around people that only do those things, putting you in situations that only do those things. And as you kind of fine tune your world, because you can you can make money in that peace and calm, right? Unless you think you can't, and then you, because you, yeah, unless you think you can't. Um, those are all based on belief systems. So it's really important to kind of cultivate this sense of peace and surrendering from the brain space and moving more into your heart and your feeling space. And this is, you might be like, yeah, 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 I totally get it. I don't see very many people that actually do this. Most of us don't do that because it's, we grew up in a culture and a society where, where that wasn't valued. And so collectively, as we unravel these pieces, right, we have to really be honest where, where we think we're right. Just being very mindful of how, how we go about doing things and why we're going about doing things. So before we even can get more into this fox, what's helping separate this fox from this land is part of this awakening. I mean, the world is shaking up, right? Um, energetically, spiritually, and in some ways it's been a very um, tumultuous experience where, you know, the last couple weeks has been very tumultuous spiritually. You know, when I shut my eyes, I can feel this huge shift happening where people aren't even necessarily conscious of it, but this upheaval, upheaval of emotional debris, this huge upheaval of this collective 
um, monster, this collective consciousness, this almost like monster where it's just like this huge energy force of like bringing all of this stuff up. Um, and it's interesting to me because some people aren't even aware of it, you know, but then you start talking to them and you bring their awareness to it and they're like, oh, and then they start getting really scared. So there's a lot of fear associated with this huge shift right now because we're in between things. And that is represented here with the sun and the moon. There's this in between, this, it's almost like our duality is even shifting. And in some ways, even our connection with spirit is shifting as it always does during these awakening kind of catalyst moments, you know, where all of a sudden it feels like our connection is lost a little bit, like um, a radio station is, not, is almost getting fuzzy. Um, and you're like, hey, man, I'm, I've always been able to connect, and why am I having a hard time now? Um, and it really, they're there. It's actually, they're there stronger. It's more like being open, being open to maybe they're just not here now, maybe they're over here. And so kind of staying open and reaching out your hands metaphorically and you'll find them again. Now here's the other thing. It's like I can hear them strong, definitely. Um, and I know some of you all can hear them s strong. But that feeling of home that we used to get from that connection is different now. And it's in that unsettled space that I'm talking about. Like, I can hear them. I can hear them like they're sitting next to me. But it's this, where's that sense of peace? And that's the fear that I'm, that I'm talking about, that we're moving through collectively. Now, you can see in this painting that nothing bad is happening. It's actually really magical, and it feels really good. But because we're moving through, just like the last several months, we've been moving through our lower three chakras, in that lower three chakra area is the amygdala, which is the back of our head right here, right? Which is, um, you know, our sense of survival. It's kind of our higher brain, our lower brain. Our lower brain is the amygdala, and um, it's almost like that's the part of us that is, a, so that is the lower animal part of our brain that feels fear. And it is in this lower animal um, brain that we're kind of moving through and moving out of. We're expanding. I've talked a lot about dinosaurs. That's where this part of the brain was is from. Um, and it's our relationship with fear. So it's really moving through these um, innocent parts of ourselves, possibly, um, and just straight up raw fear, like fear itself, because of this duality, because of the sun and the moon in their relationship together. So it's it's, you see the sun here and it's eclipsing the moon and the sun is the masculine, divine masculine and the, and the moon is represented by the divine feminine and that's symbolic of a lot of things. It's, um, it's shifting, it's definitely shifting more into balance but we have to take responsibility for the masculine parts of ourselves that are eclipsing the feminine within ourselves. Just focus on you, not society, right? Not what's going on in the culture. Just master yourself, master your own mind, right? That's what this fox is, mastering your own mind. And so really going in and, you know, the masculine and the sun is active energy. It's going out at you, right? Whereas the feminine energy is more of a magnetic energy and it pulls you in and it's, it's, um, it's like recessive, right? It's recede, it pulls in and the masculine energy pushes out, right? That's how it's designed. And because we've been so imbalanced from a cultural perspective, we have to get back into balance because without balance, we don't know what our center is because in, when we're out of balance, we have no center, so coming back to center is coming back to home and knowing who we are and know in acting out of power. Power is synonymous with love, acting with true power, true light. So we have to really look at the parts of ourselves that um, eclipse the feminine. Where in your life um, do you not listen to yourself? Because listening to yourself is the divine feminine. Whether, you have, whether you're male or female, that's the aspect of yourself. Listening to yourself and knowing who you are. Knowing how you really feel about something. Because if you're quiet enough, you'll figure that out. 
right? You know what that is if you ask the questions. So when you figure that out and you really do know, are you acting on it? That's the masculine. Now, if you don't, that's the masculine eclipsing the feminine, meaning completely disregarding her, telling her to be quiet. And we do this um, even with our emotional selves, no matter your gender. Do you tell yourself that you shouldn't be feeling the way that you do, telling yourself to shut up, telling yourself to play small? These are the parts of us, the divine masculine within us, that's eclipsing the divine feminine. Now, they're meant to, to work together in harmony, right? So we're meant to know who we are, our connection to spirit, where we come from, and our actions are aligned with all of those things, right? So it's a beautiful, beautiful process. And so it has nothing to do with gender at all. It's, it's, a, it's a, almost like a naivety or an immaturity with our own spirituality. That's what it is. It's nothing to do with gender. So where do we do this? Right? Where can we be better at this? You know, do you speak with integrity? Speaking is an action. So are you speaking your truth? Do you people please? Do you not, do you hide and not tell people how you really feel about things? And I don't mean being a bully and like being like you're a jerk or whatever. I mean with integrity. Are you really being seen? Because that is a relationship with yourself, but it's also a relationship with spirit. You know, where are you not allowing yourself to be seen in all of your fullness, in harmony, in balance? And right now with these energies this month, we're really seeing parts of ourselves. We're, we're, it's almost like this last hurrah where it's like these last little bits of our subconscious and we're always unraveling ex and expressing more and more, right? Um, it's more about, and expanding more and more, I should say, it's, it's more about um, really trusting in the process that whatever is arising is part of your ascension path. Meaning, whatever emotions are coming up, trusting that. And maybe you're really um, in this space of joy and happiness and fulfillment. And regardless, there's a lot of energy going on right now helping us propel us into um, more, just more harmony, more balance, more energy. Just keep following your joy, you know. Um, but we are being asked that this month. Um, and you can kind of see, I, I want you to be aware of this. You can see the divide between the land, but also there's no stars in the sky on this side. And that's where we're at right now. But we are moving to the right where there are a lot of stars. And that's symbolic or metaphoric of um, it's dark right now. It's been dark this month in some ways. It's like a clean slate. There is no life here. There's no stars. Stars representing light and love and life. So there's this clean slate, there's this womb, you know, we are in the birth canal. So in some ways we're already moving out of it, I can tell. When I first did this a few days ago, we were in it, okay? But um, now it, it's starting to lighten up. <clears throat> so if you're still experiencing that, or maybe you're not experiencing that at all, just understand, just keep planting those seeds and keep moving forward. Just keep, just keep, nothing bad is happening, just keep choosing love. So, and then now we're back, so we have the moon and we have the sun, and we're back to the uh, fox. Now the fox here is a red fox, and so it's it's called a red fox, but it's orange in color, right? So in this way, um, it has everything to do with the second chakra. We're still growing up in the space. Um, we will probably until we, we leave and we reincarnate. Um, because this is our space of sexuality and joy and... Um, pleasure, and our, emo our relations with emotions. Like this time in our awakening, um, we're still reconciling all the times and moments in our own lives where we did not allow our emotions to flow in a healthy way, right? We were all taught to shove them down, 
And even if you had loving parents that allowed for you to have an expression, society didn't. And we talk a lot about this because this is really a lot of the stuff that we're repairing. Um, because all of the moments, it's timeless. This part of our being actually does not exist in linear time at all. So meaning, you know, why, why do you have PTSD from trauma from your childhood or even war or whatever? Why, do you, why is it still carrying in your cells, right? Because your body remembers. And in that way, it's still waiting for you to process it and to integrate it, to allow for it. So in that way, it's a beautiful design because it, it is so hopeful because there's always opportunities to repair everything. You're never, ever stuck. Um, and there's a lot of beautiful teachers. Brenda's an amazing teacher in that regard where she can help you um, move through some of those things that you think that you just have to keep continuing to carry. Like, this is just part of my story and I have to live with this. Like, does this happen? It's like, no, you don't. You can actually move beyond it. Um, and we all need help in that space um, for sure. But not to get sidetracked. So this orange... The second chakra is really, it's really important. It's like following your joy, really following your joy. And again, balancing that feminine and masculine, like meaning backing it up. What brings you joy each day? That's what you should be doing, right? Um, are you, if you don't know what that is, then you probably are it's stuck in some habits, right? Where you are um, just stuck in habits. So creating new habits. And that takes a lot of effort. It does to, to create new habits. Um, but it's time is now. It's almost like because of this womb-like space, please plant these seeds now. Start these new habits now. This new year is beginning, right? So, yes. So do that. And, you know, cultivate your joy. But you can see it's the fox. The red fox is a beautiful balance between this joy and this celebration and this love um, that, and this mental agility and this use of this mental energy, because we can use this mental space as a tool. And this is what they're also asking you to do. Let's use your mental tool, meaning if if you're overly emotional, if you find yourself overly emotional and very comfortable in that space, like you feel so much, you could create balance more with using more of a mental energy, right? Or maybe you find yourself more in the mental state where you don't even know where the last time you cried, right? And then you, can, you need to move more into the orange space, which is feeling your emotions and allowing them to come out. So you can come at this either direction. It's so important to, um, with the brain, how we use our, our brains is to create new habits, is to tell our brain what to do. It should not be in charge. It should never be in charge. Like, I think we need to do this um, while just completely disregarding how we feel and what really is right for us. Um, though that we do need to do that sometimes when we're creating new habits like working out or eating right. We have to use our brain to be like, nope, I don't care. We don't need that fourth cookie, right? Or nope, we do need to keep moving because that is, it takes balance, right? Or we need to be balanced about it. We have been sitting for days. So there is moments when we have to rely on the logic of the brain to help move us into balance, and it does take wisdom and researching and knowledge to know those kinds of things of what is healthy. But there's a lot of information out there. Again, if you seek, you shall find. So no matter where you're at, the ways that we can use our brain are for some of the reasons I just discussed, but also for putting patterns together by cultivating habits, part of that spiritual practice we talked about earlier, of becoming aware. How do you feel? Noticing the patterns. Noticing your triggers. Um, because the more we're conscious of who we are and what's going on, the less and less that amygdala is in charge. Because we're in charge. We're always in control. We really are. It's, it's more about what part of you is in charge, is in control. And so in this way, um, you're being asked to consciously use your brain to help you, this is almost the, the divine masculine, right? To cultivate the things of your heart, of your joy, of your passions. Um, yes, because it is all about balance and harmony, and we're trying to be mo we're moving into that more and more, right? We're getting better at it every day. So putting that together. So, 
yep, that's how we use our brains and that's how um, we're at being asked to use our joy, following that as a compass. And now you can see we move into the right side of this painting into this unknown space, um, into this wonder, almost like this magic here on the right side. And it's, it is, it's magical and it's divine, it's universal. Obviously there's galaxies and galaxies and galaxies and suns and suns and suns, which are stars, right? Um, within the void though, so it's a perfect balance of the voided space of the feminine and this holding the masculine energy of all these suns. So there's an abundance here, right? But they really wanted to um, talk about this balance because here you can actually experience it and in experiencing the balance of the masculine and feminine you can feel how powerful it really is. It is looking at a galaxy in the night sky and just being in awe. There are no words needed, right? And that's part of this masculine and feminine balance that we're coming into, even on the planet, and that's why they say we're having so many um, earth issues, not issues, but like weather, um, drama, you know, extremes, um, though some of it is due to, um, some would say is the global warming, I feel it is um, where we're more of what Greg Braden feels it is, which is the beginning of an ice age, a mini ice age, where um, all of these, all of the things that we're seeing are no are normal part of uh, the beginning of a mini ice age. Um, not to say that we need to stop pol polluting the earth and take responsibility for our mistreatment of her as we're taking responsibility for the mistreatment of ourselves. There's a lot of healing that needs to take place in the earth and we do need to change our behavior. But I also at the same time feel um, that's happening. And I'm, and I'm bringing that up because um, this is nothing bad is happening. And the more we can choose love and take responsibility for the masculine eclipsing the feminine, we're going to find balance. We really are. And you can see this galaxy and this energy following this back end of the fox and the tail. So there's just two more things with this painting they really want me to share. One is the power of the feminine, what that really is and two, this kundalini awakening, because the, as the weather, that's why these weather, weather patterns are happening, because whatever we're seeing in the material world, in this 3D world is what they say, there's so much more happening in the other dimensions, energetically, spiritually. And so when you start feeling and moving beyond our physical bodies and feel what's going on and we start tapping into who, more of who we are, and you can't do that with your brain. And that's why we're being asked to step more into our hearts because we're, we're expanding more. As these weather, we're having a kundalini awakening. So as this three-dimensional reality is shifting, so are our physical bodies, our three-dimensional physical bodies. And in some ways, they're shifting our lower three chakras. And so we're having this kundalini awakening. And that kundalini word might be weird, but it's basically energy. We have more access to more of who we are. So it's almost like a lightning through our cells where all of a sudden, and you can probably feel it, you've been feeling it for the last week or so, where all of a sudden we have a ton of energy and everyone's like, is it a full moon? It's not even a full moon, it's not even close to it, or even a new moon, it's in the middle, right? So it's this kundalini awakening where all of a sudden you have a ton of energy, you might need less sleep, but if you need more sleep, that's okay. Then it just means you're probably healing and doing a lot of different things. So you just gotta trust your own process. Um, no judgment ever. It's, um, but there is this kundalini awakening. They want you to be consciously aware of that. Tap into the earth, feel the earth within your feet, feel your cells rejuvenating, work with this energy more like consciously saying, hey, I'm releasing all dis-ease. I'm releasing all this old guck from my second chakra. I'm releasing all, all of the uh, fear from my body. I'm visualizing it pulling from my cells out into the universe and really allowing your cells to feel fuel back up with the light of the stars, right? 
And we're going to work a lot on that in our next retreat, Awakening the Light, because they showed us different kinds of things with that, which is very cool. Um, so there's a Kundalini Awakening, but so we're going to go back to the Divine Feminine. I have a hair. I have a dog, so there's hair everywhere. Um, the Divine Feminine is extremely powerful. It's really misunderstood, and I'm going to explain it to you this way. It is silence. Now, silence exists always, and it's not understood. Our brain can't understand it, not really, if you really think about it, really feeling that void, really feeling that silence. And in that silence, we become face to face with ourselves. So parts of us that might feel afraid or sad or depressed or just, just straight up raw, raw fear. Because it's in the silence we become very present. So it's all the stuff the masters have been talking about, power of now, where you can, you're all of who you are in the moment. Now here's the thing about this silence or this femininity, okay? We try to understand it by talking. We try to understand it by explaining it. So I'm sitting here and I'm talking and I'm talking and I'm talking. But the moment I actually start talking about it is the moment it disappears, right? And that's femininity. Now it's almost like a riddle here. But I want you to open up to this idea, this feeling. It's an experience and it cannot be destroyed. And that in some ways, this divine feminine energy is really, um, has threatened because you can't destroy it. Though we have tried cult of, culturally, collectively, because we don't understand it, we can't control it, right? We can't seem to put form to it. We try, and that's that. Um, eclipsing of the masculine energy. So we're going to get really loud and we're going to distract ourselves and we're going to avoid and we're going to deny. But it's like we can't escape it. So really experiencing and cultivating this divine feminine energy. It's in the silence. It's in this feeling. It's all of who you are. It's an experience. It's not words. And in that way, words are so limited in what we can actually communicate or even what we can know. And that's where we are really being asked to move into a space. And that's where they say go to your heart because your heart can integrate these things. Is truly feel... Stop this. Listen to yourself. You are the one that you've been seeking. Talk to you. And there is some repair work there. You might meet up with parts of yourself that need love because in this space you're connected to home. So when you're connected to home, all the parts that have missed home or need the love of home or need the comfort or need a reprieve are all going to scurry to the surface. So in this now, in this moment, when you sit and you show up and you're like, I'm here, who needs my love? Parts of you, right? And then you... Then you love them. You let them have a voice. You really get to understand them like they were children. and Have, have you tell yourself all about it, why you feel the way that you do. And Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And as you cultivate this more and more, it changes the whole story. It actually changes everything I just said. It's magic. 
It's in this space that we're moving into where we can cultivate this energy all the time. It's in this energy where we are taking responsibility and we, are, we gain wisdom and understanding how destructive we have been, not only to ourselves, but to each other. Because if we're doing it to ourselves, we're going to be doing it to others. And vice versa, if we're doing it to somebody else, we're doing it to ourselves. The key here is moving into this space. This is where we can um, alter reality. This is where we can manifest whatever it is that we want, for sure. We can start shifting reality materializing things, moving rocks, like how they did the Mayan um, Stonehenge and the, you know, not the Mayan, the Mayan's the other side, but the, they say they did that, the Mayan pyramids too. They moved it with psychic energy. They moved major rocks because they were able to unite with the rocks and the energy. So, this is the end of the fox painting. Get control, not control, that's a bad word, or whatever, it's not the right word. Um, surrender. Become floating with your mind and continue to move into your heart, taking responsibility where we eclipse our femininity, open up to this kundalini awakening that's happening, and another aspect of these two other paintings, it's so interesting, it are different components of this masculine and this feminine energy. So here's the first masculine painting, or the painting that I did first, and it is of the sun energy. Now, I, when I was painting these, I was just having fun. And that tells you the power of joy, right? And the t power of when you just follow it. So I was just painting both of these, and honestly, I already sold one of them. The bird one is for sale, but the first one I'm going to show you, which is the masculine energy, um, and I didn't even know they were connected until I did the other one just for fun. I didn't even realize it. I just wanted to do this and whatever. Um, they're like the same painting, but in a different aspect, so it's really cool. Um, but it's what I'm talking about here with the sun and the moon eclipsing, and the thing is I didn't even know I was going to connect the, all three together until the last recording got deleted and whatever, and Spirit's like, no, Wendy... Listen, <laughs> remember, listen. Um, and so, yeah, so here is the first painting. Um, and it is obviously of a boy, young boy, moving beyond the earth to, to a doorway, which is really cool. This is the one that I saw as soon as I put it up. So it's like it reminded them of their brother who had just passed away. And it's beautiful. So, so whatever this means to you, I, you know, of course, art is subjective. But the intention, part of the spiritual message, because that's my intention here on the planet and to continue to work from, is sharing messages and helping us through this awakening process. So yeah, here we have a young boy f moving from this earth following steps into this doorway and this doorway leads to anything and everything right it's like open to the possibilities and so to me this tells me that there's opportunities right now in this energy that we can access other worlds right other ways of being other dimensions so it's very exciting very kind of creative energy um they felt it was even connecting to other realms of like people passing over um or finding their way to the other side, which is beautiful. Um, yeah, that gave, gave me chills. That's exactly what they thought. So, but it shows how young we are. That's how young we are in a masculinity. We're like middle schoolers. And for those of you that don't have children or forgot or maybe you're older now or maybe you didn't have kids or maybe you don't really remember how, whatever, middle school is hard. Middle school is where um, our kids just finished middle school and there was lots of bullying, lots of just uncomfortable, really trying to figure out your emotions and how you feel and just like 
just all of this like tumultuous, not even knowing how to handle their emotions. Um, that's where we're at, right? And so not knowing how to handle your emotions, what do you do? You bully, you blame, you, you take it out on somebody next to you. That's what we do collectively. And we do it. Even, even I, I'll get mad at traffic, you know, or, you know, that's a part of our go-to is to blame. And it's just an emotional immaturity. But at the same time that there's this immaturity, there's this innocence, this beautiful light innocence to where if we can tap into that part of our collective where we're curious, we want to open these doors, right? And it's also during this age where we begin to understand how society works. We're just beginning to understand how society works. So there's this opportunity right now to where we can change the course of things, right? We can change the course of things. We can change and alter our pro trajectory based off of these moments, based off of these few years that we have by showing ourselves and each other that we live in a society with kindness. We live in a society where we're open to the possibility, where we don't know, and let's cultivate curiosity and joy and inclusion and compassion and just beauty of the diversity of people. I mean, not to mention gender and race, but even individuality, meaning even if somebody looked just like me, allowing somebody to be um, different from what we expect them to be, right? Like the immaturity of being like, oh, they look like a soccer mom, so, and then having all of these definitions around that, or just even about class or money or what you're wearing and all of the limitations we do. So it's very, very immature. So moving out of that and being like, okay, if that, if those aren't the rules of our society and what we're moving or what kind of creates the structure, what can we change it to? And that's this masculine energy. What are our actions? What are our actions based in? What are our, what are we creating here physically in this world? And we're really being asked to be really innocent about it, not in an immature way, but an innocent way where it's just like, let's have this young um, curiosity of this joy of like really exploring earth for the first time. And as we do, there's these doorways that are going to open to us where it leads to beautiful things that we didn't even know were possible. And it takes this other aspect of really trusting ourselves because we can't just have this without the feminine right and we focus so much on this doing space well let's explore let's do these things but if you don't cultivate a wonderful beautiful loving relationship with yourself and um, a relationship with spirit this can't happen it, it cannot happen. So now here's this last painting. And so I painted this. These were weeks apart or a week apart, I guess I should say, because the other one I painted just like March 1st. And here's the other one. And it's the moon energy, of course. But it is a mastery. Somebody said it looks like you're looking, you're under, you're in the water. You're in the water, looking up at the moon with the water, like you're in the water, upside down, maybe plugging your nose, and you're looking at the water, at the moon through the water. And I loved that because there's so much in that. Water is our, our emotions. Water is also symbolic of our subconscious um, waters also ha is changing. Spirit said they've shifted the water, um, just like they shifted the water and our DNA many, many, many years ago when um, Homo sapiens made a huge jump. Like there's a huge jump in our DNA from the first Homo sapiens to like the second or third ones, I think. I don't know exactly, but... Um, 
and there's a huge shift in our DNA and we don't know what happened, but lots of Aborigines would say and know that they were visited by people from another planet and um, they seeded us. There are so many accounts of this from so many different civilizations at different times where they had no contact with each other talking about the same thing. And from that moment of being seated, all of a sudden we were way more conscious. All of a sudden we had way more, um, yeah, we were just a lot more conscious. So innovations in technology, things like that started happening. So anyways, so it's, our DNA is changing. That's kind of what's happening now. Our consciousness is shifting. And um, it is the light is awakening in our cells and DNA. And I um, do believe that. <clears throat> that's happening again. So anyway, so the water is symbolic of all of those things. And um, not a boy coming from the earth, but now you have these birds, these crows coming from the moon, which is super cool. This is for sale. Um, I love this painting. And you can just see the same motion, right? Which is the spiral, which is this sacred geometry of this natural rhythm of life, of growth and expansion. Um, just telling us that we're right where we need to be. Our rhythm is perfect. We can't get this wrong. Just keep cultivating. We're doing the right thing. We're, just cultivate this, cultivate this, cultivate this, this mystery, this magic. Um, and this balance between black and white and the reason why they're black is because it's unknown and it's meant to be unknown Just like the silence needs to be silent it, the moment it Isn't silent. It's no longer silence anymore. So it's just like be it feel it be quiet listen be feel experience So in this way um, that kind of represents that your intuition and you can even see this glow coming off of the moon. It's like this green, beautiful glow, which is this cultivating of the self-love, which is um, reiteration of the same messaging. Um, but yeah, just cultivating this. We have to cultivate this, allowing ourselves to kind of experience this part of our being, the wildness, the raw nature of just howling at the moon. We need to do that. That is a need, a natural need. We can't just keep fitting ourselves in these boxes. That's just social conditioning, and it hurts us. We're meant to be the spiral, which is always expansive, and we're free. We're free in every way, every way. We're allowed to change our mind. We're allowed to be fluid in everything. And so we're learning how to integrate that. So, And that leads us back. So all three of these paintings are all about the same thing. And how we integrate the moon and the sun is mastering our mind. Mastering our sacred temple within. Cultivating a spiritual practice or a mental health practice that aligns with peace and balance. Less anxiety, less stress, less fear. Getting... Um, mastery of the self and that is facing your fears feeling them understanding where they come from and then integrating loving them and and slowly allowing that fear that might come off as a vicious animal at first slowly through time and patience of just showing up and loving it and showing that vicious fear that you're, you're here to love it and it's okay and you're going to slowly get closer to it and slowly maybe pe start petting it to where then it starts calming down and starts understanding that there is no fear and it's okay. But you have to cultivate that with the spiritual practice. I'm petting the air right now. And we do that with all the things that might be within us, this life and others, that whatever is coming up is what you're here to do and soothing that beast of fear that might have wanted to kill you at first gaining its trust then it starts shifting and it may, becomes not so vicious anymore that's what we're being asked to do and it's a combination that act alone that spiritual practice is an is, a, is an integration of both the divine feminine and the divine masculine 
by getting our brain involved, we're going to create this habit. This is what we're going to do, brain. Put the pieces together. Where is this coming from? Now we're going to sit here and we're going to breathe. <sighs> Very cool. I'm so happy to share this journey with you. I'm so grateful that you um, are so helping support me in this process of um, just sharing these messages and doing this with you. I really, really do um, send you all so much love. And um, I really hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear what you think because I don't get to see what you guys think. So I would love for you to comment just as, I mean, I don't need feedback, but I love to get feedback. <laughs> um, just what you thought about it. If this resonated, where it helped you. What you'd even like to see. So I'm open to it too. All right, so till next time, I'm so excited. April's already starting, like in my brain, it's already starting to move. So I'm um, very excited to share all of this with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, sending so much love. Bye.